Thank you very much for that. May we then move on uh, to Jane, uh, your paper, first of all, on safeguarding. Thank you, Chairman. So this is an opportunity to update the board on the work of the safeguarding team across the NHS, um, particularly led by NHS England. And just to point out, we have got statutory responsibility um, for safeguarding. Um, sometimes what's not understood is the range of work that that um, encompasses. And so the paper talks us through the work we've done around prevent, uh, child sexual exploitation, FGM, looked after children, mental capacity act, as well as looking at our child protection information system and the national independent inquiry into child sexual abuse, which is a, a significant range um, and quite a breadth of work. So I just thought it would be helpful just to take us through very briefly some of those key areas and obviously very happy to um, take questions if that would be useful. Um, so the prevent statutory duty came in place in 2015 and it applies specifically um, at the moment to NHS trusts um, but we are beginning to do more and more work now in, into the commissioning system. We put some, we put some words into our standard contract and we've done quite a significant amount of work with the Home Office more recently around the fact that there are a reasonable percentage, something around 30 to 40 percent of some of the perpetrators that actually do have a mental health problem. Um, and so therefore we've needed to work very carefully with mental health trusts um, to make sure we've got the right response and the right <coughs> support. And we've got further guidance being developed and will be published um, in the near future. The um, Home Office are um, uh, satisfied with what we've been doing. We've got some of the highest um, prevent awareness training um, out of any of the public sector, both for the basic one and the RAP, which is the more the more detailed one. But obviously it's something that we, we need to remain alert and vigilant to um, because it's um, a, a potentially significant issue. Around um, child sexual exploitation, clearly the Rotherham inquiry really brought that into focus. And since then, We've had uh, done some significant work with organisations that are really around how to recognise it, how to look, how to look for it, and again working in close participation with the Home Office. So real cross-government um, working around that. They, the report that they published um, actually uh, congratulated us on the work we've done, and particularly the work around the child information sharing system, which I'll talk about in a moment. What we've done here that's quite important as well is we've commissioned research from Salford University and one of our acute trusts just to make sure that the information we've given, the guidance we've put out has been, um, is well received and the pocket guides that we produce for professionals have been sort of flying out on the shelves because people actually want to have it. They want to have it with them, very short, very handy for them to look at. I think um, if I move on to FGM very quickly, that um, is now, there is now mandatory reporting from April 2015. And I think this, the volume um, has been quite a surprise to many people. So we've got over 1,200 newly recorded women and children identified every quarter. Um, and that is a significant number. Um, the vast majority are London-based. Um, so we've got 45% of new cases um, in London and about 44% of the total are based in London. And I think what we've done here is both spent a significant amount of time looking at raising awareness but also providing support to um, support women um, and young and, and children in many cases. And we've also done some prevention work. So, for example, before things like the, big school, the long school holiday in the summer, really working with DfE, um, others, to, to raise awareness in schools to try and prevent, um, literally, prevent um, some of this with um, young girls going, going abroad. Um, uh, the Mental Capacity Act, I, I wanted to just highlight because the law it says in the paper that the Law Commission was about to publish um, their report and they actually now have done it. They published it um, a couple of weeks ago and they've outlined their recommendations. Uh, they are being considered at the moment by the Department of Health and we will need to look at those quite carefully because it is possible that that will put quite significant um, responsibility around deprivation of liberty processes um, with CCGs and the NHS. So that could have quite a capacity issue for us that we need, that we need to look at. So we're working really closely with the Department of Health um, around that to make sure that we can monitor and support it um, as well as we can. I want to move on to another area that I think is worth highlighting, and, and that's the child protection information system. The board will have had um, some updates around that in terms of our corporate performance reports. 
I think it's worth pointing out this is the first national system of its kind in the world that actually connects child safety information between local government and the NHS. Um, I think it's fair to say we had a bit, we had a slow start. Um, we now are beginning to roll out quite rapidly and since the paper was written, um, we've moved from 44 local authorities to 48 that are actually uh, using um, CPIS and we've got in total something like 121 NHS settings that are using it as well. And the real benefit of that is um, wherever you are, if you're in an emergency or an urgent care setting or you're um, in a social or you're in social care, you can actually see that a child is either on the social care, on, an, on a register, re at risk register, what their plan is, and social workers can be can be notified of children attending. There have been many, many reports into child abuse in the past where um, families may move around or people may move around different organisations and if you actually bring that information together, you, warning signs would have come out and, we, and that's been missed. So I'm, I think you know, we feel, those of us that are involved in this area and as an ex-emergency care nurse myself, knowing the impact that this can have um, is, is significant and I'm really pleased that we're making progress on that. Um, and then the last couple of things I just wanted to highlight was the uh, modern slavery work. This again is beginning, has beginning to raise um, profile. We have published the first um, slavery and human trafficking statement that the board, um, the board approved. We're working really closely with the anti-slavery commissioner, and we were really, we had a very strong role in the launch um, of their annual report um, a few months ago. Which again, we uh, were complimented on the work that we've done around that. And then, last but not least, uh, the safeguarding reforms. Um, Last year, Alan Wood took a fundamental review of the role and function of um, local safeguarding children's boards. Again, he made um, many recommendations. We think that the, so the Children and Social Work Bill is now in the House of Commons waiting royal assent. That is going to mean that we need to have new statutory guidance and new changes from April 18. Again, that's likely to put some significant emphasis on on um, CCGs and the NHS to, to do more to support so again we'll bring back uh, we'll bring back to you um, any concerns or updates we've got from that the priorities are effectively um, more of the same the only difference is we've um, we've highlighted here some more work around domestic abuse as being important um, as we move into 17 18 so our annual safeguarding update will be published next month and we've also got our net fourth national safeguarding conference on the 21st of April. If any of the non-executives or directors would like to come to that, you'll be very welcome. Thank you, Jane, for what I have to say, I found a surprisingly wide-ranging report. I hadn't appreciated uh, the array of activity that came under that safeguarding umbrella, so mm -hmm. thank you for the summary. Uh, let me invite uh, comments and queries from members of the board. Moira. Um, thank you, um, Malcolm, and thanks, Jane, for um, that very useful update. Um, the IT system, um, it's encouraging that um, the uptake is continuing. It re frequently appeared as red on risk register. Does that mean it's no longer, in, in your terms, uh, red? It's certainly moving away from that. Right. Um, what we've done, uh, we've worked really closely with um, NHS Digital. We uh, we did a review, we rebased it, and we've actually had some new approach to how it's um, being implemented. And it is, it is working. The team have worked incredibly hard to move this because it is such a priority. But I think we can definitely see things moving and the team feel much more confident now about the rollout. A, a couple of more points by me, um, uh, Malcolm. I was surprised to see the modern slavery within care settings at the special training that's been um, uh, around care settings. Mm. Um, could you say a little bit more about... Um, uh, why that? I mean, obviously, m modern slavery has takes a number of forms, but is, has there been a, a particular identification in care settings? There's been more. There has been some indication of some issues within the care settings, which is why the team have been prompted to do some more work with them. Mm -hmm. But if I can give you some more details of that um, offline, if that would be useful. Thank you. And a question about whether uh, there's any training that the board should undertake in relation, certainly in relation to prevent. I know that other boards have, mm. um, that I've sat on. Um, and finally, just to um, uh, a comment on the looked after children. Um, 
paragraph 24, it talks about looked after children under the care of local authorities have poor health outcomes, yes. which is of course true, but it's not. it depends what you mean by their peers. If, you, if they're compared to the whole cohort of that age group, of course, um, that's true. Um, but if you compare them to children from similar circumstances, they have better outcomes than... Um, I think it's a, it, that's a, com, a, that is a, com, that is a, ch, a against other, you know, yeah. the rest of the children. Yeah. So it's back yeah. to um, Victor's it's point about inverse. No, no, it's not about the care system. It's not a, it's not a, it's not a criticism of the care system. Yeah. It's a criticism of yeah. uh, the fact we've got a, a wide variation, which is why we're tackling it through leading change, adding value, and the right care system, which is a right care team, which is around how to reduce variation across the board. In terms of your suggestion about training, I mean, one of the questions in the board paper is, would the board like any either any information or any update? And I'm, you know, we could very um, happily provide some training around um, both safeguarding more generally, but specifically around some of the areas that I've highlighted in the paper. Yes, the, the, the care system is a, is a very good example of inverse care law mm. in action. Um, but I was just, uh, are, we, are there any barriers to rapidly increasing the rollout of the child protection information system? Because clearly, the slower it goes, the more there is a huge risk to children um, who don't have access or aren't on it. So I'm just wondering whether how we might work with the system, both mm. health and local government, to remove barriers. It seems to me that it's, some, it's one of those things that we ought to be getting um, regular readings on because it's mission critical, isn't it? Really, We're talking about children. Yes, I mean we had there was we did have um, and probably still to some extent have some uh, barriers or whether just constraints. I would I, I think so. We, there were some technical. Um, issues that included things like rollout of N3 and a variety of other things which took slightly longer to uh, address than we'd originally anticipated. Um, we've got um, a complete, we've got a, a different, you know, different team and, and a real, really good support from NHS Digital um, now with that. And the other, the other issue has been um, capacity constraints within local authorities actually being able to put the time to this and then and actually deliver what we need to, what we need to do. So I think. All of those are, are, are being managed, all of them are being supported, and as we're getting more and more rollout and more people are seeing the benefits, the better, um, the better it's getting. Just one more question. I agree with everything that Malcolm said about the breadth of this report. Do we have any notion of what the capacity, increased capacity, um, that will be required in NHS England? Because throughout this you <laughs> Not yet. Right. That's part of the work the team are doing at the moment, is to assess... Um, first of all, we needed to see what the recommendations yeah. were, which have only just been published um, around from the, by the Law Commission. Um, and the, the work with um, the local child safe boarding boards, the Alan Wood work, we have been working directly with the department for some time on those. So we will be able to um, come back with some more information about that. Good. Well, thank you very much, Jane. We, we note the report and uh, commend the work. May we think further about whether there are other activities that the can. board might um, get involved in, just to make sure that we're on top of the demands that these obligations place upon us as an organisation.